Hello, everyone, and welcome to the launch of Anuket, a project being launched within LF Networking, formed through the merger of OPNFE and CNTT. I'm Heather Kirksey, VP of Community and Ecosystem for LF Networking, and I would really like to welcome all of you to this call. And as I get started with my slides here, I uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, ecosystem and context into which this project is being born. We've been on this NFE journey for quite some time with our initial forays into virtualization and disaggregating hardware and software. We've made a great number of technical strides over the past several years, incorporating things like orchestration and automation, looking ahead to cloud native technology. And all of this is really great because as we look ahead to things like 5G deployments, edge deployments, and the extraordinary range of services that folks want to deploy on those networks, it becomes more and more crucial to have a very good, solid uh, infrastructure foundation on which those services can run. Before I get too much into how the new project will work, I want to take a little bit of a stroll down memory lane. In late September, early October of 2014, we launched OPNFE. I was brought in to be the founding executive director of this project. And we really looked at, for what was very new to us as an industry, this virtualized software environment. We focused on uh, incorporating service provider requirements into upstream uh, partners. We built uh, and integrated network stacks. And we really focused on CICD and automated testing, which was a very amazing and cutting edge thing for a telecom project to do if you think back over six years ago. Uh, I think one of the things about which I remain still so much in awe is the fact that our technical community went out and really focused on doing this in our initial open source project for the telecom industry. However, one of our struggles was that at the time, there was no real good common agreement on what that infrastructure should look like. And so in April 2019, at the Open Networking and Edge Summit, uh, we launched CNTT, a joint task force between GSMA and uh, the Linux Foundation. It was really looking at bringing the operators together and helping them create a series of models, architectures, and specifications as well as requirements for that infrastructure. So really getting folks on the same page, getting them thinking through their common operational models, their common business drivers, and what those requirements really then netted out to in terms of the network stack. And then, you know, what was really clear was that these two projects really made up two halves of the same coin. On the one hand, we had very strong operator input, very closely aligned with our architectural operational uh, deployment requirements on their end. On the other side, we had a very strong engineering focus that had very successfully integrated and deployed uh, cloud infrastructures for telecom for quite some time. So beginning in uh, about mid last year, we started having these two uh, communities in conversation, thinking about what it might mean for us to take the work for it together. What was really key for us is that we wanted to ensure the widest input across the entire ecosystem. We really wanted to improve the alignment and working relationship between architects and engineers, between those who design and those who implement. We wanted to really make sure that we had a very good consistent uh, story and perspective when we worked with our upstream partners in both standards organizations and uh, other open source uh, software development groups. And at the end of the day, we wanted to break down the silos so that we could better deploy better infrastructure for these services. So coming up with that, uh, we really sort of have brought together a nice set of work from that reference model, which really looks at the operational requirements, the life cycle, abstraction requirements, uh, what needs to be exposed through interfaces. That work will continue to be published by GSMA. Our very strong relationship that we have with them represented in the task, joint task force will not go away. Uh, we continue to have the 
the two paths of reference architecture, one VM and OpenStack based, the other being based on Kubernetes and containers. And then we're bringing to all of that great implementation work from OPNFE across our labs, projects, our installers, our CI CD pipeline, as well as our really robust set of testing projects that span from functional and to performance testing. And then probably most important of all, all of that work is leading into conformance and verification programs so that the operators at the end of the day have a neutral industry entity that they can trust who has tested things that come into their house to make sure they align with all of the principles and with all of the requirements documented in this work. One might think uh, that uh, the flow of this goes from uh, modeled through the architecture into implementation, and it certainly does. But one of the things that really led us as we were contemplating this merger was the fact that it really is a continuous iterative loop, that we find innovation, we iterate on it, we integrate it, and that anyone on the engineering side as they're working on deployment could go back to architecture and have architecture requirements changed, made more obvious, et cetera. So all all of this is meant to be a very good integrated feedback loop. And so, which you can see here as well, it's very important for all of these groups to have an understanding that we're all in the same boat. And if we want to improve the architecture, we're going to do it together. So, talk, so I've talked a little bit about you know, sort of where we came from, where we hope we're going to. And so the question is, what, where does our name come from? OPNFE has a very long uh, relationship with uh, rivers. That's what we've named our releases after. And one of the images as we were going through this merger that made sense was the confluence of rivers, you know, two strong rivers, not tributaries of each other, but two strong rivers coming together as one. So we started looking at rivers river deities, and we uh, encountered Anuket. Uh, she's the Egyptian goddess of the Nile and oversaw the yearly flooding of the Nile River. What we really, what really connected us to this concept was the fact that if you think about, once again, all of these upstream projects, all of these services, it's almost like a flood sometimes. It can feel overwhelming. And so what we really do, and as she did, uh, and the ancient Egyptians did, was to harness what could be a flood and make it into something that is nourishing and upon which other services, a foundation upon which things can be built. She's also associated with gazelles, arrows, and other swift moving and agile uh, entities. And we thought that that was a great thing for us to have as a telecom industry as our own, pay, our own pace of deployment and innovation has increased so much over the course of the past several years. So we are bringing together uh, in this project a whole set of work that we believe has a great deal of business value. At the end of the day, we hope to deploy infrastructure and services more rapidly. We hope to make them more interoperable, more robust, and of higher quality. And we hope to get the time to revenue up and cost down. And uh, you know, I'm not alone in thinking this. We have a number of members who've been active in CNTT, a large ecosystem of members active in LF networking, and they all really believe that this is the right way forward. And so we're creating a great center of gravity for folks who are looking to solve these infrastructure issues. And speaking of which, at the end of the day, uh, as with any open source community, it is really about the people who make it up. We have an amazing community across both of these projects that have come in to create this together. And you know, we've had a lot of good discussion about what it means to do this together. And I think it's just such an expression of optimism and hope to launch a new project. We've had a very challenging year uh, last year with a lot going on. And so we really hope to set the tone for 2021 with a statement of optimism and hope and a belief that building infrastructure together to common requirements Requirements tested with common testing tools and going into a conformance program that represents the consensus of the industry is the way to help us move to all of these new exciting services, new business plans together. So looking ahead for the rest of the day, speaking of community, you're not going to just hear from me. You're going to hear from a lot of other people. We've got two presentations, one from an operator perspective, the other a technical project deep dive. And then interspersed with that, you're going to see a number of video clips from different voices.
voices around our community and within our project and from our board uh, and industry analysts, Caroline Chapel from Analysis Mason. And then we're also going to have a number of executive spotlights where they ex uh, communicate to us what they're hoping for. Once again, really appreciate you being here. I'm so excited for the launch of this project. Uh, I feel as though this is a culmination of my time that started uh, with the beginning of OPNFE, and I look very much forward to what we're going to do in 2021. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sandra Rivera, and I'm the Chief People Officer of Intel. Prior to this role, I was the general manager of the Network Platforms Group and also had the honor of being a founding member of the OPNFE board, and I led the marketing committee way back in 2014. It's been wonderful to look back on the progress made these past six years across our connected communities as the telecom industry transforms itself with the rollout of 5G. Accelerating the virtualization of the communications infrastructure to the next generation telco cloud based on a nimble and scalable cloud-native architecture. On Aket, the merging of OPNFE and the Cloud Infrastructure Telco Task Force represents the latest phase in this transformation to dramatically improve the predictability and efficiency of rolling out new services. I'm excited to see the next generation of network transformation come to life with On Aket, and I'm wishing all of you involved in this community the very best. Hello, everybody. My name is Al Morton. I'm the Anikit Technical Steering Committee co-chair with Walter Kozlowski. I believe that Anikit is a more complete organization than a standards body or an open source community alone. It's an example of a combination that's greater than the sum of the parts. Network operators are defining the common characteristics of network virtualization that they need to help increase deployment and reduce their costs. When the combined voices of the operators are understood by the former OPNFE development and testing subprojects, the result will be a much needed verification and evaluation of the desired virtualization system characteristics. Also, there is a clear value for the new conformance testing program when operators seek and take advantage of successfully tested vendor products. So as we begin 2021, Anikit is in motion. And uh, I hope that you will all uh, join us or some of you will join us in 2021. And in any case, uh, we will, uh, we'll, we'll see you there. Hi everyone. Greetings from the hot Australian summer. My name is Walter Kozlowski and I'm the Principal Cloud Architect at Telstra and a co-chair of the Anuket Technology Steering Committee with Al Morton. Anuket is truly a unique project in covering operator requirements, collection and normalization, subsequent open source software development through to industry certification programs of ecosystem implementations, all under a single initiative. And all of this under the umbrella of Linux Foundation Network and in collaboration with many important LFN projects and industry organizations like GSMA and Etsy. The telecom industry is going through a major transformation, rolling out 5G and related services. To cope with this change, the industry needs standardized infrastructure for network functions and cloud native applications and a robust compliance and verification framework. And Anoket brings exactly this. I believe that Anoket will continue the entity's operator requirements focus and OPNB's legacy of operating upstream first, and a joint culture of collaboration across a spectrum of open source projects and industry organizations. I am proud to serve in the role of a co-chair of the Anuket Technical Steering Committee. I am excited by the unique opportunity this project creates for my company and for the whole industry. I hope you will join us and will share these feelings. Thank you. Hello, my name is Trevor Cooper. I'm with Intel and I work on cloud native infrastructure technologies for 5G and Edge. Very excited to be here today with my colleagues 
Fu Chao, Mark, and Pierre for the launch of Anaket. I've been a long time contributor to OPNFE. I've been a TSC and uh, on the TSC uh, project technical lead. And uh, I've seen how OPNFE has a unique capability to solve problems, do integration, deployment, and testing. On the CNTT side, I believe that the specifications that CNTT is developing are going to help solve very significant operational challenges, simplify deployment, and make uh, cloud native technologies much easier to consume to help accelerate the adoption of 5G and Edge. And I think by bringing together the two communities, we're going to create a real virtu virtuous cycle of developing specifications and implementing them in real time to improve those specifications. Mark, how about you? Thank you. I'm Mark Byrell from uh, Canonical, and I've been involved in OPNFE since only about 2016, which is close to the beginning, but not the beginning. Um, the thing that I uh, found the most interesting and loved about OPNFE is how, as a community, we all pull together and we're able to share uh, knowledge and, and strengthen the various projects that were inside of OPNFE. One of the main um, uh, uh, purposes of OPNFE was to take telco requirements and essentially work upstream to ensure those requirements have been met. Uh, in addition to that, we also had a, have a uh, continuous pipeline to ensure that we can prove that the uh, requirements have been met, that they are functioning as expected, as well as to add as uh, a safety net in case any inadvertent regression happens in the future. Um, the heritage of testing inside of OPNFV is uh, a wonderful aspect of how we were working together. And as CNTT came around and started coming up with requirements and specifications for interoperability between the different um, NFVI vendors or virtual function vendors and the different platforms and trying to really reduce the matrix of you know, combinations of different um, OpenStack providers with different technologies and only certain VFs work with that. Um, one, you know, once I started looking at that and uh, OPNFE, it really made sense to me that OPNFE starts taking its requirements from this uh, an, um, CNTT project. And now we're really closely aligning and forming a new project called a new kit, which I think is going to bring tremendous benefit to the ecosystem. Fu Chao, what are your thoughts on this? Thank you, Mark. Uh, hi, hello, everyone. I'm Fu Chao from China Mobile. Uh, I, I was involved in the OpenFV community ever since its beginning in 2014. And also I was uh, involved in the founding of the CNTT community. From my understanding, these two communities actually represent two aspects of the NFV involvement, uh, which can never success without each other. CNTT actually provides the guidance and requirements and the direction. And then OPNFV provides us with the ability to real, try, try real new things and take actions. So that's why we put uh, two communities together. So uh, back in the years when OPNFV first uh, founded, uh, like what Mark said, we focused more on the uh, carrier grid features improvement for the uh, platform like OpenStack. These years, although NFV have, has been deployed in many uh, cloud uh, around in operators, uh, there are still problems that operators or vendors cannot solve all by ourselves. Open source community is still crucial in defining the de facto standard and interface and also provide us this uh, reference. So far, I, from my understanding, operators only actually virtualize the network, but the cost and the SOT are still huge challenges for us. So with the involvement of the net network virtualization, interoperability, integration, and the need of continuous uh, implement and test and delivery of the network, of the new services still are quite important to us. 
So we are expecting that this new community advocate could help us to provide more input on this. So what about Genosoft here from the standard side? Well, I think the, the, the combination is very interesting. Um, my name is Pierre Lynch. I'm from Keysight Technologies, but I also chair the TST uh, working group at Etsy or ETSI NFV. So we build the specifications behind the NFV architecture, but also from my perspective, we're very interested in, in, in OPNFV and CNTT from the beginning. Uh, I've been participating in the in both of those communities uh, as the TST chair and representing uh, what we do there. But also, it's it's been a su very successful two way collaboration in the past um, with input of real implementations and not just document specifications into Etsy, which helps us greatly. And then we reciprocated with our knowledge into the communities as well. Uh, I love the fact that they're uh, merging into Aniket. I think that's an exciting development <clears throat> to have the modeling architecture and then implementation and testing all in the same organization and everybody collaborating. And then we'll keep, uh, I will keep uh, participating uh, going forward as the Etsy NFV representative into the CVC, the Compliance and Verification Committee and see how we can, again, two-way collaborate uh, going forward within that uh, and to move uh, the actual compliance testing forward for the Aniket uh, specifications. So no, I, I think it's super exciting. Uh, I'm going to keep uh, uh, going with this. Um, and I, I think it's a great way to move forward, especially with cloud native technologies, which is something that we're working on at Etsy and V as well. So uh, with that in mind, I think uh, with the crowd that's assembled here, a bunch of veterans, any final thoughts for anybody for going forward with Anika? I'd like to extend a warm welcome to everyone who wants to join us. Welcome to Anika. We're a friendly crowd. Come and join us. Hi, I'm Jun Lan Fan from Beijing, from China Mobile. Um, first, Happy New Year. I'm so pleased to start 2021 with the launch of Anakit. Uh, it's a merge from OpenNFV and CNTT, which are two great projects under LFN for so many years. So uh, for sure, today is a milestone. Uh, so congratulations to the team, to the LFN team, to the uh, leaders and developers who have worked so hard uh, to bring the projects, uh, the two projects together to become Anakit. Um, thank you all for your work and uh, congratulations. And uh, not only I think we have a, such a great name for the project, we also set a uh, very clear mission uh, for Anakit. The mission is to deliver uh, standardized uh, reference um, framework uh, specifications and uh, common architecture for seeing uh, cloud-based network functions and the virtual uh, network functions. And um, I believe um, this mission will um, give the developers and to give the community uh, a better sense of concentration. So as always, our FN focuses on deployment. Um, it's the same for Anakit. So let's uh, work together under this mission to deliver solid work uh, to truly help the industry to move faster, to accelerate the digital transformation. So now we are in a new era of 5G, a new era of data, a new era of intelligence, uh, speed matters. Um, the whole industry uh, has done so much work, but some of our work are fragmented. Uh, we all have a different, probably unique ideas, 
from our own solution, our own product services. So, but I believe they're a layer uh, which is common uh, across the industry. Uh, let's uh, make that layer solid and put the work under anarchist. Um, I believe if we can deliver um, what the mission requires us to deliver, will sure will help the industry, help the members of LFN to move faster. So uh, I'll be with you. Let's work together. Hello, this is Vincent Dano from the LFN board. I'm in charge of standards and open source at Orange. The Telco Cloud is a big topic in the industry those days. And today is a new step in this area. I remember two years ago when a bunch of people met in Madrid. This was the birth of CNTT. And since then, a lot has been done. So I'd like to take the chance to give credits to the teams. First, we have the reference model, which is now an official document of the GSN Association. We also have reference architectures. And thanks to OPNFV, we have the test suites, which give us confidence into what we're doing. Also, we have demonstrated we can make it in the field. So really a big thank to all the teams. By merging CNTT and OpenAV today, we are joining forces. It is a new milestone. It is now time for maturity and adoption. Whether you are an operator, an infrastructure vendor, or even a vendor. And Anket is here to help. So I'm looking forward to this new group. Thanks, everyone. It was great to hear all of those expressions of the importance of this project and where folks hope that it is going. Next up, I would like to introduce Beth Cohen from Verizon and William Diego from Orange, who are going to provide an operator perspective into this project and uh, what its uh, business value is going to be for our operators and their ecosystem. So Beth and William, please take it away. So welcome to this Anakit launch. We're very excited to, to be launching this great new project, um, a meld of the CNTT project and OPNFE, uh, which I think will benefit everybody. Um, I'm, um, I'm Beth Cohen from Verizon, and um, I am a product manager in Verizon responsible for uh, software-defined networking products. Um, and I've been involved in uh, CNTT from its inception about a year and a half ago before it even had that name. Uh, and I've been mostly focused on uh, reference models and um, sort of the organizational uh, components of the CNTT product project. Um, and uh, I am really looking forward to the what's going to be coming out of Anakit. And we're going to be talking about operator, you know, what are the business drivers? Why, why is Verizon interested? Why am I interested? And um, I'm going to turn it over to uh, William from Orange, who's going to talk a little bit about why he's here. Yes. Hello. Thank you, Beth. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is William. I'm working on, on the coordination of the open source initiative inside Orange. Uh, so I am working in CNTT from one year ago, and I'm very proud to be part of this adventure. Uh, and, and now in, in this uh, new Anucat project, it's, it's very exciting for me to, to be part as well of this, this uh, new project. So thank you, William. So let me talk a little bit. Um, uh, let's talk a little bit about the Anakit organization and why it benefits the, the operators and, and I should say the entire community, but we're really going to focus on sort of the business aspects of, of why this organization um, is of benefit to us. So, of course, Anakit is, is really a meld of the best, I feel, from the best of CNTT and OPNFB. 
Um, and CNTT, of course, focused on the architecture aspects and the requirements. And OPNFE focused more on the testing and compliance and um, the development aspects. And, and they, I think that the two really are very complementary, um, both from architects and developers working together, but also operators and vendors working together toward a common goal. And so, you know, William, if you could just um, sort of, uh, you know, make some comments about how, yes. how you feel uh, and how Orange is yes. supporting us. Yes, thank you. But yes, I, I, I think that this uh, collaboration between CNTT and OpenNFV is very important for the ecosystem. For the beginning, OpenNFV uh, has provided different frameworks and, and, and also uh, improved different uh, specifications in order to, to, to make these uh, different specifications a reality. And, and today, uh, thanks to this cooperation, we have uh, made a reality these uh, different uh, POCs and also uh, field trial around the CNTT specification. So this collaboration and, and, and this new project which uh, uh, have CNTT and OpenNV makes sense. So thank you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, the collaboration, you know, really let's get down to, you know, what are the, the business drivers here? Um, so, you know, here is the, is the scope of the project it's been, as it's been defined and, and how we benefit is, you know, it simplifies our operations. Uh, operators are used to very complex environments. And, and you know, if, if we can support fewer infrastructure platforms, that's, that's incredibly um, beneficial from a business perspective. It will, um, save resources. It will, um, you know, allow us to cut costs and, of course, deliver better services to our customers. Uh, and um, it allows us to compete, you know, on the features and services that our customers are interested in. Our customers are not particularly interested in infrastructure um, because, as far as they're concerned, it's just part of the package. So, um, uh, William, if you could talk a little bit about, you know, the cross-community collaboration, how that been. Yeah, this, this cross community uh, was very important from the beginning for, for CNTT and uh, CNTT uh, was a joint cooperation between the Linux Foundation and, and GSMA and this cooperation will continue in, in Anuket and it's very important to, to have this, this ecosystem and cooperation between all the uh, open source and, and, and standardization bodies that that uh, provide more uh, a compliant ecosystem for the cloud infrastructure for telco services so it, this uh, cross community is very important for for the future of Anuket as well agreed I very much agreed um, so let's talk a little bit about how this um, helps the community you know what, what is the what is the benefits to not just the network operators but also you know, the, the ecosystem and the vendors within the community. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the network operators benefit, you know, limit, limit the number of infrastructure platforms, uh, reduce capital expenses, faster build out, you know, um, sim simpler RFPs. I mean, it, it, what, we're, what we're hoping to incorporate is require this as part of our RFP process, which will again, allow us to incorporate the, the efficiencies. Um, but there's obviously other uh, benefits as well. Um, and if you could talk a little bit more, William. Yes, uh, from uh, operator network, uh, for network operator point of view, uh, this uh, aspect, RFP aspect, is very important to simplify this process. Uh, from, from Orange, uh, since the last year, we have started this uh, utilization of this uh, uh, CNTT specification in our internal RFPs. So we already use CNTT. It's, it's very important for, for us to, to, to have this, uh, these specifications and we are uh, very uh, exciting to have new project Anuka that will provide uh, more compliant, cloud compliant uh, specification for, for containers as well in, in future releases. 
Yeah, and I'd like to talk a little bit about the, that uh, pick up on the containers because uh, I know Verizon has been um, you know closely um, watching and been involved in the in the RA2 uh, work stream, which is focused on containers um, because we understand that there's gaps uh, within the ca container. Uh, ecosystem and the projects, and we've been working closely with CNCF to to drive um, the development uh, to to fill the gaps, to drive the development that's needed to fill those gaps to support those network functions that are so critical to us. You know, five G and and some of the other upcoming technologies. Um, so with that, I'd like to you know any uh, well, I'd like to talk a little bit about how the vendors uh, benefit as well. Um, because the vendors, both the infrastructure and the NFV vendors, um, mm -hmm. you know, don't need to support as many infrastructure platforms, proprietary or, or open source by, by um, working within the community because we have, uh, we have developed those reference architectures and we have also developed that end-to-end -end compliance and conformance that, that allows the, the vendors to really focus on, you know, what differentiates that, that the value that differentiates, differentiates them with the community, uh, which is really you know, the features, the value added features that the operators are interested in. Um, so any other comments? Uh, yes, I, I think that this is very important to have the all all actors in this ecosystem to, to come to Anuket to contribute and, and also uh, provide their uh, point of view regarding the evolution of, of the technology around the, the cloud infrastructure. It's, it's very important to, to build this, this new Anuket project. So uh, from operators, network operators, and FV vendors, and, and also infrastructure vendors, uh, you are very important for us. Uh and, and with that, I'd like to um, welcome everybody. I'm really excited about this launch and, and I know um, we, we really welcome everybody to participate um, to yes. make this a success. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and, and see you, I hope see you in, in coming Anucat meetings and, and, and events as well. Thanks, Beth and William. It is always so important and key to us to hear from our operator members to understand how the technology that we're building and specifying will be used by end users. Uh, next, we've got another set of videos from folks in the community and industry uh, talking a little bit more uh, unscripted in terms of what this project means to them and what they're hoping to achieve. So I will turn it over back to our community voices. Hello, I'm Caroline Chappell. I'm a research director at Analysis Mason, responsible for our cloud uh, infrastructure research. I'm here today to give you my thoughts on this uh, new initiative, a new kit. I have to say it correctly. Uh, it's a difficult word to say, uh, but we're quite used to that in the uh, telecoms industry. So here are some thoughts on a new kit and uh, what it will bring. To, to our sector. Work on the disaggregation of network software and hardware so that network software could first of all run on virtualized commercial off-the-shelf servers and later on a common cloud platform has been ongoing for a decade now. It's certainly not been an easy journey and results have been mixed, but there is an inexorable momentum towards a cloud-based network. The NFV genie is not going to go back into the bottle. The announcement of Anuket shows, I think, that the industry's approach to network cloud is coming of age and that important lessons have been learned over the past few years. OPNFV has made a significant contribution to industry understanding of the telco cloud infrastructure stack and the automated pipelines needed to integrate, deploy and upgrade it. With hindsight, CNTT should probably have come first, but this would have meant operators relinquishing from the start some level of control over what their telco stacks look like. In the early days of NFV, it was hard for operators to acknowledge that the cloud is a separate enabling platform for their networks rather than an integral part of them. 
The industry had to go through the pain of trying to maintain and onboard VNFs to idiosyncratic telco cloud stacks before coming to the realization that the network cloud is not in itself a competitive differentiator. It's the ability to innovate on top of the, a network cloud that will distinguish operators from each other. With that realization, CNTT was born. Now, Anuket can apply the learnings, tooling, and certification capabilities from OPNFV in a more focused way around CNTT's vision of a single telco cloud reference model that can be implemented using multiple technologies today and in the future. Choice and flexibility will come if Anuket can lead to an ecosystem of tested, ready to deploy cloud stack components, or even entire cloud stacks that conform to its reference architectures. And given the level of industry support for this initiative and the long experience it can draw on, I'm confident that it can. Now, there is an important uh, imperative for the telecoms industry to drive the specification of a common network cloud right now. In the early days of OPNFV, there was an expectation that the telco cloud would become more like uh, the IT clouds of the time. But in fact, we see that the opposite is happening. IT workloads in a cloud native world are becoming more real time and distributed needing to run across cloud platforms in multiple locations, just as network functions do. And an emerging generation of enterprise use cases wants access to hundreds or even thousands of edge compute locations. These new applications also have similar compute intensive and low latency requirements to network functions. For the moment, the telecoms industry has a more urgent need than other sectors to build a distributed, high-performance, highly available network edge cloud to support the next wave of virtualization in the 5G radio access network. But if the telco industry can solve all the cloud architecture and implementation challenges for the RAN, then it will create a cloud that will meet the needs of many other industries too. This is an exciting prospect for operators, not least because of the new monetization opportunities it can bring. However, achieving this next step in the telco cloud journey will be difficult and it will require a lot of collaboration and knowledge sharing. Anukit needs to become the focal point for industry collaboration on the next evolution of network cloud. And Analysis Mason will be watching with interest the growth of the Anuket uh, ecosystem. The hope is that Anuket is flexible and neutral enough to become a point of reference for the entire industry. We certainly think that uh, Anuket's work streams are addressing the right issues, infrastructure automation, multi and hybrid cloud infrastructure and hardware abstraction. The network cloud of the future and indeed future industrial edge clouds are not going to be x86 only. They'll need to support a range of hardware acceleration technologies and multiple chipsets and the ability to support resource scheduling across a heterogeneous hardware landscape is a key challenge at the moment. There are many more challenges involved in running the network on the cloud. So it's good to see Anuket providing a bridge between two very different organizations that are network and cloud oriented respectively, the GSMA and CNCF. Now, I've been uh, involved with NFV for a long time now. And despite all the setbacks, I'm still optimistic about the direction of travel towards the network cloud. I wish Anuket every success and look forward to seeing it uh, make a difference for the next chapter of the telco cloud journey. Hello, I'm Yonis Orninen and I'm the representative of Nokia to the Elephant Board. On the Elephant Board, I'm also the chair of the SPC and the Finance Committee. But we are here today to talk about Anuket. As you know, Anuket is the merger of CNTT and OPNFV. Two great communities have decided to come together to work as one community and build a bigger community. This is how open source works, and this is in a really approved how the bottom-up uh, way of working actually can create new communities, create new re uh, great results, and be successful together. Um, as a Nokia representative, I have to say, we have been uh, um, 
a founding member of OPNFV, and we have been contributing to CNTT since its beginning. We are really excited that these two great communities have decided to come together. I do understand that this has needed quite a bit of work, but now it's time to congratulate you for your launch. Um, the, what I would like to do is to wish you the best of luck, but I would also like to welcome the whole industry to come together and work together in Nanicat to fulfill its mission and make and show that this uh, system really works and show the power of open source. Thank you. Hello, I'm Cédric Olivier, uh, working for Orange as an open stack expert, as a network automation expert. I'm project technical leader of uh, OPNAV Funktest, part of uh, Anika TSC and uh, but part of uh, Elephant Board as a developer representative. So I'm here to contribute to Anucat uh, because uh, we do also our command uh, cloud infrastructure issues. Um, we have we are creating Anucat as, for the same reason why we created OpenNV many years ago, mostly to ease the, the, the NFV journey. So. We are focusing now on a few common reference uh, architecture as opposed to PNAV as the beginning. And we are switching from basic interpretive testing to true conformance where I'm contributing and Orange is expecting great results. So it's a big change uh, compared to the classical OPNAV release model, but it, we are closer to our end user needs now, whatever it's about the operators, the VN vendor and the different factors. So Tom, Thomas, what's your, your thought and uh, your role um, in your company? Thank you, Cedric, for that uh, introduction. Uh, yes, my name is Thomas Fredberg. I work for Ericsson as a uh, cloud infrastructure architect. And uh, in Anuket, I come from the CNTT part of the reference model uh, where we are sort of developing the, the input for the different reference architectures for OpenStack and Kubernetes and so on. And for us as a vendor, uh, it means a lot to be able to uh, tap into what the different operators uh, want to have out of their cloud infrastructure, as well as the alignment they are seeking uh, amongst the different virtual architecture functions. So it's a good opportunity for us to uh, speak with the operators, have a, an aligned view amongst our vendors to make it simpler to consume in, in a cloud way. And we're thrilled that Anuket is now uh, more bringing CNTT into a regular operation instead of the sort of the task force as it started. But we're really welcomed that. And uh, with that, I'll leave over to Uli. Yeah, my name is Uli Kleber. I'm working for Huawei as a standardization expert. So we feel that one of the big challenges now in our industry is to bring together telecom needs and cloud native architectures. So the, the basis of, for this effort is the NFV technology with its definition of an NFVI infrastructure, the virtualization, virtualized infrastructure management, and also the whole MANO stack. So CNTT did a lot of work for the NFVI infrastructure. And now with Anocut, the testing and conformance work of OPNFV gets closer to that. So this provides a really great opportunity to better align the understanding for the NFVI infrastructure and evolve the existing technologies in te telco networks to better adopt cloud native and telco needs. So I think this opportunity will provide a, a very good step forward with Anucat now. With that, I hand over to Lincoln. Thank you, Yuli. So I'm Lincoln Lavoy with the University of New Hampshire Interoperability Lab, and I'm a TSC member uh, in the Anacat project. Uh, from my perspective, seeing the, the growth that the community has undertaken um, in the development of the combination of CNTT and OPNFV to, to form Anacat is, is instrumental. I mean, the, as the old adage goes, you know, for those of us that have been around a while, it's, it's always the same clowns in the different circus, right? So what we've done is we've, we've building the bigger circus, um, pulling everybody together. And, and it really is, you know, uniting the communities that are responsible from the service providers perspective with, you know, specifications and what they want that cloud infrastructure to be, you know, all the way through to, you know, reference implementation to then, you know, testing and validating those implementations. And that, 
bringing the community together like that and kind of trying to shortcut those feedback loops and stuff like that, I think is what really, you know, and is going to empower us to, you know, kind of take this to the next level and, and solve some of the, the cloud problems and challenges um, that everybody's talked about. So I, I don't know if you guys agree with that or if I, I'm jumping the mark on that, but that, that's definitely my perspective of, of what we're, you know, facing next. No, totally agree. And Cedric is on mute. Yes, yes, uh, fully, fully, fully agree. So we'll see how if uh, the community grows there in the next week. The, the scope is uh, very, very huge. We have to fix uh, all our issues. And I would say one of our next key challenge uh, is to agree on KPI and to integrate, uh, to integrate more benchmarking as well. That's a, a true uh, a true need, and also to quickly bootstrap the VNF and CNF onboarding uh, governance suites. So the, the current ref the test suites are not that bad, very good. You could already run them; it gives confidence. But uh, I, I'm wait I'm waiting for the next uh, VNF and CNF onboarding uh, governance suites. Yeah, yes, and I, I, I go ahead, agree with that, and and I. I think one of the challenges there will be to, to take what we already have with the good conformance suites and combine that with all the new technologies. And, and the big challenge there is to bring in all the cloud native and container work and, and running the same tests. Now it's not just uh, a simple step to go, but it's really necessary and will make the work of Anocat very valuable, I think. And yeah, I, I, I think, so go ahead, Lincoln. I was going to say, I think Cedric hit on kind of a key point of, of looking at like the KPIs and stuff like that, because that's going to be a conversation that has to exist between, you know, all sets of the community, right? So it's going to need to exist from both the operator's perspective of like what their expectations are on that infrastructure and that, that need. And also, you know, the vendors, you know, with helping kind of set that of, of what they're, they're able to deliver today and what they're going to be looking to deliver tomorrow, right? And like, we have to get kind of all those things aligned in, in the proverbial clouds, um, you know, to, to make this all go. And uh, I think that uh, another challenge that we are going to be facing soon as well is, is the inflow of new type of accelerators that's going to make it harder, both for the different reference architectures as well as for the testing that, that needs to be done because it becomes more heterogeneous in the data centers. And, the ability to handle that both for the software as well as for, for, the, uh, for the testing suites and so on and so forth will be key to success here. And there comes in other foras like ORAN and so on and so forth that definitely would, would need those accelerators to succeed. I, I, I will add as a key challenge also the, the automation part of being able to deploy and test everything from scratch to the network services. So that's something we start we started uh, in uh, in Anucat and Synthity, and we can leverage existing tools. But that that would be one of the key challenges as well to run the from scratch to the, the network services automatically to for the next steps. And it Absolutely. asks for a pipeline with different actors, so it's not as simple. But I'm very happy to see that uh, in uh, in our specification as well. So at, at the end of the day, I think we've, you know, this is a huge step forward. Um, I'm excited to see what the next year brings for many, many reasons, obviously, with, you know, where we've come from in 2020. So see, seeing, you know, this starting at the 2021 is, uh, I think, a, a great kickoff for the year. Yep. Yes, fully agree. <laughs> yeah, fully agree. One. And maybe, and maybe that's on a good note to end it all as well. And uh, thank you for this time. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Stéphane Demartis, VP Infrastructure uh, Solution and Services uh, at Orange. Within Orange, we are using both uh, CNTT and OPNV communities, and uh, we have an internal infrastructure named Orange YAS, yes, fully compliant with the CNTT. And we are major contributors on this community. Uh, we count on the Linux Foundation community to further develop and ease integration of telco virtualized function on the infrastructure. With this merge, Anuket should have the size, the power to drive efficiency of the industry towards best-in-class telco cloud, benefiting the entire industry, developer, integrator, and operator. Thank you very much.
Up next, we have our final deep dive presentation. This one getting into a bit more detail on the technical aspects of the project. Uh, we will be hearing from Gerge Sistari from uh, Nokia and Georg Kuntz from Ericsson. And please, gentlemen, take it away. Looking forward to hearing more detail on the work that we're doing. Hi, welcome. My name is Gerge Chotari and I'm uh, working for Nokia. Hello, my name is Gio Kunz. I'm a solution designer with Ericsson. And we will talk about the technical uh, details of Nokia and a little bit of its history. And for that, I need to share my screen. So first of all, let's talk about uh, a bit about the mission statement of, of Anokent. And uh, it is uh, basically to create uh, an open source um, reference cloud infrastructure uh, model, architectures, conformance programs, and, uh, and tools to deliver this. Uh, and, and the aim of all of this is to empower the global communications community um, to enhance the, the technology. And how do we do this? Uh, is basically uh, by merging two already existing open source uh, initiatives. One of them is being uh, OPNFE. And uh, OPNFE was started in uh, 2014. And interestingly, its target was to build an open source NFC reference platform, uh, which is pretty similar to, to the current Anuket. Um, um, target. And uh, during the day, uh, during the time, uh, OpenFV uh, evolved and, uh, and joined to LFM as a, as a funding project. Um, and in parallel to this, um, there was a, an initiative to, to standardize somehow uh, cloud infrastructures and create uh, specifications for these standards. And CNTT was born, uh, and later it was um, it was put out to the open source with the support of uh, of LFN and and, uh, and GSMA. And uh, after a while, when uh, we started to work out the details of of uh, CNTT, we realized that that there is uh, of course some uh, implementation and uh, and conformance testing work is needed and uh, the work was organized in a way that these projects were started under uh, OPNFE. So there was already a link between these, uh, these two. Um, and later on, it was decided that these two projects should, uh, should merge to, to uh, have a better um, uh, communication integration of these uh, projects. And this is, uh, this is the apropos of, of our presentation because we are uh, having this merge uh, now. So let's talk a bit about the former CMTT specifications. So as I mentioned, the overall uh, target was to, to create some kind of a specification for cloud infrastructures. And the approach was to start um, a very abstract uh, reference model, which basically describes uh, a cloud infrastructure in a technology agnostic way and defines different uh, cloud infrastructure hardware and software profiles uh, and assigns uh, values to, uh, to different properties of these abstract cloud uh, uh, models. Um, so in this way, uh, we can have um, a technology agnostic standard how a cloud infrastructure uh, should look like. And based on this reference model, there are reference architectures created, which are um, uh, technology specific uh, implement uh, specifications of cloud infrastructure. So currently we have one, uh, one OpenStack based uh, reference architecture and one Kubernetes based reference architecture. These are the two most prominent um, infrastructures uh, anyways, and these reference architectures are still like a specification document, but they are describing how one should uh, build and integrate a Kubernetes or an OpenStack um, uh, uh, 
installation, and and uh, we describe the details of of these, like meaning like what kind of components you need to have, what kind of parameters you need to have, all of these which are important for for uh, the VNS or CNS to run flawlessly in the in the infrastructures, because the main aim is to lower the cost of integration, integrating the infrastructures and and the workloads together. And uh, based on these reference architectures, of course, we need to have reference implementations, which are really uh, installable uh, um, uh, Kubernetes and, and OpenStack uh, installations. And these are done uh, in different uh, OPNFE projects. And um, there is a detailed specification is also created about how to build these uh, projects, some kind of a, a cookbook or installation manual uh, for this. So anybody can can reproduce um, the building of these uh, these infrastructures. And as the last step, um, there is a conformance um, uh, part of CNCT also, which is uh, basically a test. Uh, any OpenStack or Kubernetes-based uh, infrastructures, if they are according to the specifications of the reference model and the reference architectures. Uh, and also they are testing the workloads. If, they, if the workload is compliant with the, uh, with the workload specific parts of the reference architectures and the, and the reference models. So these are the four type of documents what, uh, what CNTT uh, brings to, uh, to OPNFE. And as I just discussed like already some parts of these, like the implementation part of the, of the reference implementations and the conformance part of reference conformance are already part of, of, uh, of OPNFE. Um, here, I would like to give some uh, some pointers. So here, uh, here I, I uh, have links to different uh, artifacts by the by the group. Uh, this means that that I have a link to the read the docs version of the documentation for all the all the before mentioned documents, and uh, and the link to the raw GitHub. Uh, repository link so anybody can can go and and uh, edit these and create a pull request also for the the reference implementation and reference conformance uh, projects I included already the new onuket um, uh, wiki pages and uh, it's important to to recognize the pattern here that whenever we are talking like reference something one, that means the OpenStack based uh, reference architecture, reference implementation, or reference conformance. And if it, uh, if it reference something too, then it's the Kubernetes based uh, reference architecture, reference implementation, or reference conformance. And with this, I would like to hand over to Gaon. Thanks, Gege. So, <clears throat> yeah, as Gege already introduced, like the, the extensive um, uh, specification work that uh, is being done uh, formerly in CMTT and now in a new kit. Um, the question is, um, is that sufficient or not? Um, we are in the tech industry very much aware that specifications are a fundamentally important thing because they provide us with a framework to build uh, complex yet still interoperable systems. Um, but they also just that, right? Requirements in a textual form. So in Anuket, we will go one step further and complement the specification with real implementations, so to say. And those implementations come in various flavors. Uh, of course, you need to start with deployable platforms as Gag already mentioned. You need to have something to install and something to run workloads on and to, to use to validate those workloads. You need to have a comprehensive set of test tools to really go into the details and, and, and put systems to the test, um, figuring out what is their behavior, what are the functional um, uh, capabilities of um, platforms. And finally, of course, you also need to have a development and lab environment for making all of that happen. 
And in the next couple of slides, I'm going to give a brief overview of the um, implementation side and implementation ecosystem of, of a new cat and how it ties into the specification work that uh, Gerge just described. Next slide, please. Good. So the starting point here really is the specification work. Um, we start with the reference model, the architecture and the implementation, as well as the reference conformance uh, work. And then um, you need, as I said, you need to start somewhere. And we start with the deployment process, projects because we need to have uh, something that we can put into a lab to work with and to put workloads on. So that's an important component. Then we have a bunch of feature projects that address telco specific requirements by building and developing components on top of the, let's say, standard platforms um, that um, correspond to specific telco requirements. We need lab as a service, as a development and lab environment, already mentioned that. And then there's also uh, another aspect and that is the comprehensive testing, test tooling part. And all of these different components will uh, provide artifacts to work with. And now the real value that a new cat brings to the table is that it allows to feed all of those different artifacts into like an integration and testing pipeline um, to integrate platforms, specific components come from feature projects, um, doing CICD and putting them to the test using our extensive test tooling. And the test tooling, of course, is particularly important because it, if you click once, okay, you, because it provides, um, of course, feedback to the implementation projects, that's understood, of course, but they, it, the testing also closes the loop to the um, specification part, right? So um, the testing results will provide feedback of, about, for instance, the feasibility of certain requirements and thereby in turn allowing uh, the specification folks to refine their architecture requirements. And Mary mentioned the same concept also applies for the test tooling part um, that allows a feedback loop. Uh, and if you click once, exactly a feedback loop uh, from the test to back to the test tooling and back to the reference conformance test suite. So um, let's go one level deeper and look at the projects a little bit, right? So from the deployment perspective, we currently have two projects on delivering deployable platforms. That is Airship developing the uh, RI1, the reference implementation for uh, the OpenStack track and KubeRev develops the reference implementation for the Kubernetes track. Then we have the feature projects Right, so a selection of those barometer is a tool that builds or that allows to monitor uh, a system at runtime and to collect uh, metrics from a system. Fast data stack provides a high performance data plane. Moon is a project developing um, uh, security and policy management, uh, security and policy management component and CRLV develops um, hard and software basically specification validation tooling. I already mentioned lab as a service as a, a general development environment for like the entire community. And then on the testing side, we have Functest, a very comprehensive uh, generic test tool for uh, running functional tests against um, cloud platforms. General cross-testing is a part of it, which is an even more generic uh, framework for integrating all sorts of test and suites and frameworks. VSPerf, NFV Bench and Sample VNF um, test the data plane performance of a cloud platform from various different angles and StorePerf focuses on the storage performance. And then, as I said, if you could click once, okay, okay. Taking all of this together is basically the, the unique thing that a new cat can deliver. So we have the specification part, we have this extensive implementation ecosystem and we create by merging CNTT and OpenFV, we create these tight feedback loops between both worlds so that we can um, uh, yeah, impact and, uh, our industry to well, the best degree. Okay, and then going one slide further, um, as we already mentioned, so we have the two pillars of the new kit that we already mentioned. We have the specification part and we have the implementation uh, side of things. 
Um, but there's actually a third flavor and that is um, the compliance um, area. Now by itself, the specifications and the, the implementation uh, artifacts are already um, tremendously valuable for the industry because they provide requirements and they provide test tooling or deployable platforms. Um, and they can be used and fine and that's, that's all good. Uh, but the compliance um, part of all of that will add a formalized process around how to formally test workloads and platforms using the test tools and the artifacts that a new CAD um, will deliver according to the specifications. It is a formalized process of how to run the tests, how to review the test results and how to award uh, compliance badges to commercial offerings. And the goal of that obviously is to simplify the, the overall process in the industry of um, building uh, complex systems um, jointly with vendors and operators. So both sides, vendors and operators would benefit from having a simplified process building on top of the compliance. Okay, then uh, some words about the relations of Onucat to other groups. Onucat as, a, as an open source project which integrates um, uh, guiding structures and create uh, compliance programs, of course, uh, have relationships to several other uh, groups. Uh, for example, um, uh, Onucat, of course, uh, uses OpenStack Airship and, and Kubernetes um, uh, Downstream, let's say, so Anuket is, is integrating these uh, these uh, these together. Also, Anuket um, uh, plans to reuse uh, the CNF conformance program from from CNCF uh, as part of the of the of the conformance. Uh, but just to mention another uh, type of group, uh, there were uh, projects inside. The, um, OpenSV, which which are which were using uh, SNSC standards to implement um, different APIs for for OpenStack, and of course the list is 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 very long. Uh, we are using lots of uh, lots of uh, different projects, but on the other side, Anuket is also contributing to to different other uh, projects uh, like the before mentioned uh, OpenStack. Uh, and the Moon project, what Garok just uh, just mentioned, or or even in the past, uh, OpenFV contributed, um, uh, for example, Phoenix project to uh, to OpenStack and and other projects also, which are related to to telecom requirements in in OpenStack. Also, we are working together with the CNCF CNF working group um, in uh, in reference architecture. To, to define the different requirements for, for CNFs. And uh, this will also affect the CNCF telecom uh, user group. And as um, similarly to the, to the use open source projects, the, the list is, 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 uh, is very long. So as we are a, a big project, we are contributing to several other um, projects. And the main point here is that, that Anuket is not, not living in a vacuum, but we are integrating to an ecosystem of, of different open source and, and other uh, industry groups. So with this, we reached the most important part of the, the presentation, which is the, the call for action. So please um, help us to make all of this, uh, this possible because Anuket is a community effort, which means that we need uh, volunteers from the community to, to do the different tasks. And uh, to start this, uh, please check the Anuket Wiki, uh, the GitHub project for, for CNTT or the Gerrit project of the former OPNFE, uh, Gerrit uh, page of the former OPNFE uh, project code, or join us uh, to discuss in the Anuket Slack workspace, workspace, or if you are really interested in, in active and interactive um, uh, communication with us, uh, join to our next LFN developer and testing forum, which will be in the beginning of February. And with this, we would like to thank for your time and happy contributing to Anuket.
呃，尊敬的安利会的社区的成员们，大家好，我是来自中国移动研究院的段晓东，非常高兴啊，在此祝贺咱们 CNTT 和 OpenFU 两个社区整合成为安利会的社区。中国移动是 CNTT 和 OpenFU 两个社区的 founding member， 也是主要的贡献者。我们非常看到啊，高兴看到这个结果，两个社区能够合并，共同为云化的基础设施提供更好的开源的基础。应该说，中国移动在二零一九年开始啊。正在建设成为全球最大的一个 AI 服务网络，支撑起我们 5G 网络的发展。那我想在这其中的话，我们也发现面向不同运营商、不同制造商的集成工作变得非常重要。所以我们也把过去 AI 服务的工作更多转化到集成工作中去，希望通过集成的开展推动 AI 服务的发展。我们也成立了专门的集成团队，开发了名字叫 Auto 的一个平台，能够希望促进整个的互操作的工作的推动。我想 Anyway 的社区的这个成立啊。有助于下一步更紧密的推动 NFA 的这个集成工作，也为产业界提供很好的一个参考的设计、参考的代码和参考的接口。那么，希望安利会的社区的同志们能够一起努力，推动这个社区能够为 NFA 做出更大的贡献。好，谢谢。Hello, everyone. I am Priyanka Sharma, and I'm the general manager of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. I am thrilled to be here today. Cloud-native technologies are fundamental to the deployment of 5G networks. As a result, it is imperative that telecom operators partner with foundations like CNCF and Linux Foundation Networking to run more performant, resilient, and cost-effective telecommunication infrastructures. By building a telco-specific Kubernetes distribution in the R2 work stream, Anuket helps position the telco industry to go cloud-native. We are excited to see future collaboration between Anuket and CNCF initiatives, like the Telecom User Group and our very latest, the CNF Working Group, which defines cloud-native network functions. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you enjoyed the show. Hello, I'm Tom Kivlin, Principal Cloud Orchestration Architect at Vodafone Group. I'm here with Sridhar and Emma, and we're going to talk about the new Anuket launch. Um, merging the CNTT and OpenFV communities to create uh, a new project within the Linux Foundation networking called Anaket. Um, I'm really excited about it. I've been involved in CNTT since uh, inception, sort of helping to develop the reference model, um, and I've been the workstream lead on the Kubernetes-based reference architecture and reference implementations. And、uh, I see the benefits to merging with OpenFV to be To be quite good.、Um, obviously, the the end result of the CNTT work streams was to have、uh, a, a reference implementation that was able to be tested against the specifications within a reference architecture.、Um, and there's a big overlap between many of the OP and NFE projects with regards to testing and conformance and and providing that feedback loop into the architecture specification delivery.、Um, And so I'm going to hand over to Sridhar now to talk about the testing projects and、um, the benefits the merger has on them. Hey,、uh, thanks a lot, Tom. I'm equally excited to be part of this launch of Anuket.、Uh, well,、uh, when it comes to the OpenFE projects,、right? so we have multiple of these projects, of which testing are one of the biggest group of projects. They have done excellent contribution to the community as such. And among these testing projects,、uh, there are functional, broadly functional, and performance、uh, testing. And and、uh, I I I I work for uh, uh, Spirant Communications, and I I'm a PTL of uh, uh, one of the testing projects called VSPerf. I also work with other、uh, projects like CIRV and Airship. And、uh, among these、uh, these functional、uh, and performance testing projects, right, the performance testing project. Uh, they focus on this automation of these test cases that are defined by the specification. The the specifications play an important role when it comes to the performance testing because they define the importance, the steps, and the configuration variables and everything, which are very much important to explain the number that comes along with the performance testing. Right, and these testing frameworks implement these uh, uh, test uh, cases that are defined by specifications, of which Anuket is one of them, and.、Uh, When、uh, with the with the merger this、uh, this OpenFE and CNTT, it has streamlined the whole process has been streamlined because、uh, we implement the requirements of the Anuket and also the take back of the learnings that we do as part of our projects, especially in VNSP, the experimentations that we do to take it back to the Anuket. 
So this streamlining has uh, uh, helped us a, a lot. And I'm very, very excited to be part of this Anket uh, project. And when, it, when we talk about the performance uh, uh, testing, right, when we want to answer the why kind of questions, uh, the, the significance of uh, the service assurance or the monitoring comes into the picture. I would like to hand over to Emma to talk more about this uh, service assurance. Thanks, Sridhar. Um, my name is Emma Foley. I work as a senior software engineer for Red Hat. Where my focus there is on day two cloud operations, which includes metrics and monitoring for service assurance. Um, I'm the um, I'm the PTL for the Barometer project in OPNFE. And uh, for the last few years, uh, we spent time helping to improve the metrics collection tools um, that are available so they're more suitable for NFE. Uh, this includes um, exposing more of the metrics that we need to mo monitor, not only hardware platforms, but also the network and the software applications that are um, very important for NFE. Um, and in terms of capabilities and in terms of working uh, with the CNTT reference architectures and reference models, we know we're not going to suddenly take a large leap overnight in terms of, uh, of capabilities. And progress is only gonna be made by working together through continuous feedback and improvement cycles. And I think the, um, the performance and functional testing tools as well as the monitoring tools that we have available are going to be key to this because it will let us continually make sure that the reference implementations meet or exceed the requirements that we expect, uh, not just with functionality, but also, uh, of course, with uh, performance. And these tools are also going to let end users take that reference implementation and evolve it to meet their own needs substitute their own components while still knowing that the performance requirements are being met. Um, so I'm looking forward to uh, collaborating uh, with the community um, on improving the monitoring metrics collection, be it for closed loop automation, for service assurance, or for, again, for performance testing. And I'm looking forward to getting a lot more feedback from end users and closing that loop on requirements and developing um, standards and best, best practices across the industry. Um, I so totally agree with your point about the, the end users, Emma. I think that that's the purpose of all this is to, is to make telco platforms and software more cost effective so we can we can deliver better customer experience at a lower cost. Um, and I think we've all made the point about collaboration. And I think one of the, the key benefits of Anika will be whilst, you know, whilst the projects may not necessarily have had friction between them, just as a TSC being able to come together once a week to make sure there's, you know, there's no overlaps, there's no duplication, mm -hmm. there's, you know, people are aware of what, what's happening within the, the, the related projects is going to be of great benefit. Very, very true, Tom. I fully agree with the point, especially the TSC is coming together, right? It has really helped all this OPNFP project, especially when it comes to the testing. We Now we really know who the end, end users are, end consumers of these test implementation, and we are very motivated to, uh, now so that uh, we can meet those requirements specified by Aniket. And also, as Emma was mentioning, testing projects are the, one of the biggest consumers of the service assurance uh, solutions. So we are very happy to collaborate with the pro other projects and also the CNTT community. I can go to it. Hi, this is Andre Fuich, CTO of AT&T Network Services. I'm very excited about the merging of CNTT and OPNFE into a single entity. This move will empower the global communications community by bringing together reference cloud infrastructure models and architectures with conformance programs and tools to deliver network services faster, more reliably, and securely. The collaborative spirit of this open source development effort will help grow the communications industry to new levels of service for all stakeholders, empowering the global society to benefit. We at at and are proud to be part of this initiative and look forward to supporting a new kit in the coming years.
Thank you, everyone who has shown up to speak today. Um, the title of the slide is It Begins and Ends with, this, with Community. This is how I ended my opening remarks, and it is how I open my closing remarks. Uh, it begins and ends with every, as with every single open source project with the people who make up and do the work that we do. From everyone who was there at the beginning of OPNFE through the founding of CNTT uh, and looking ahead, it is people who roll up their sleeves, show up day in, day out, write specs, write code, do the difficult work of harnessing this innovation, the difficult work of bringing it all together and making it all deploy, making it all interoperable, making it all test well. So I really, really want to thank everyone who has been here today to speak, as well as to every single member of our community without whom we would not be launching this project and we would not be in the place that we are today uh, as a telecom industry able to look at open source based 5G networks um, and beyond. Uh, there are a lot of ways to get involved, and you can see some links here. Uh, we have a new website for NUCAT, uh, we, uh, which also went live today. We have a wiki where you can find more detailed information about the project. We also have a new storefront. You might have noticed that I am sporting a very cool scarf here today. Uh, these will be in the store for you to order if you want to uh, fly the colors of this new project. Uh, and you can also see we've got a, a, a large amount of information on getting started with LFM projects in general. And then I want to end by encouraging everyone to attend the LFM developer and testing forum next week. We will have some Anucat uh, tracks there uh, to participate in uh, where we'll start looking at all of the work that we've discussed and how we're going to progress that and build on it in 2021. Uh, we're also going to have uh, an AMA during that time uh, on the project. So folks who have questions can talk directly to project leaders. And I just want to end with my heartfelt gratitude and appreciation to everyone who's gotten us to this point. And also with a strong word of encouragement to come participate in Aniket, help us build the infrastructure foundation that will enable all of the next generation communications-based services. This is an exciting time to be here and a very exciting project that we're building.